This Maxi Rib is Marling 40, the flagship of the Marlin Boat Shipyard range. It sums up the experience of 35 years of activity dedicated to the construction of inflatable boats. The profile is designed by the unmistakable line of the tubular, which, rising from the stern towards the bow, forms higher internal gunwales than other inflatable boats. The main deck is fully walk-around to allow you to move on board easily. The diameter of the tubular is a large 70 centimetres. Because this is a large inflatable boat, in fact, it is 12 metres long and almost 4 metres wide. It is likely that a model of this size can be used with many people on board, and it's precisely for this reason that they have created many passageways. The sofa at the bow matches the sofa that can be formed by lifting a small portion of the sun deck area. In the middle, there is a removable table. This could be a lovely spot for an aperitif. Around the mats, there are can holders and handrails. In each area, there are details that improve the usability. There is Simrad multifunction instrumentation in the control panel. Pilot and co-pilot have two independent seats, bordered by handrails and interspersed with an armrest which can be used for storage. The hard top is an important element from an aesthetic and functional point of view. The transparent top ones lighten its mark, and it is equipped with handrails on the upper surface and built-in shower on the stern side. Obviously, it serves as a support for the lights, the antennas, the flag. Its structure is so strong that it doesn't fear the overload nor the stress that comes from a high-speed navigation. The bar cabinet is equipped with a sink, a cutting board, a compartment with a drawer and a 90-litre fridge. In the cockpit, the furniture has been designed for maximum versatility. The backrests of the sofas can move in different directions and reach many positions. Among the many possible configurations, there is also this one, so to enjoy the wake, but only if you are not going fast. No additional cushions or extensions are required to form the sun deck, and all movements are easy and quick because they have been carefully designed. At the centre of the living room, there is a table with adjustable height and width. When it's reduced, it can be used as a handrail. Around this area, we find tall and wide combings that also serve as seating. In an area embellished with teak, there are can holders and retractable lights. Underneath this area, there are two huge lockers, one towards the stern, which is partially occupied by batteries, the other one can be opened with an electro-hydraulic piston and is so spacious that you can store the toys. All facilities are visible and easily accessible. Two other lockers have been designed along the sides and are useful for stowing the carbon poles that support the awnings. It is difficult to find an inflatable boat or a boat in general with such a large swimming platform despite the fact that there are three outboard engines. On the sides, there are two swimming ladders with retractable handle. The entire deck area is covered with 8mm thick, solid teak. The portholes of the cabin overlook the gangways. The interiors show us the skills and taste of the shipyard. The furnishings are in fact made with great care and with flamed teak with multicoloured reflections. There is not just the usual double berth. By reducing the length of the specially divided mattress, we can relax on the armchairs. Along the sides, there are storage units and in the entrance hallway, a container unit. Even in the bathroom, the coating is teak and the whole compartment can be used as a shower. A long list of accessories is added to the rich standard equipment, so you can set it up as you wish, if you like, even with the generator and air conditioning. 
The basic version is supplied with a hull and deck in white gel coat, grey tubulars and cookie-coloured upholstery. But upon request, colour variations, such as those of this model for example, are possible. There is a bit of rough sea here in the front of Cannes. Maybe it won't be that easy to try out this Marlin flagship, the 40-footer. Or, on the contrary, maybe it will behave very well. Just keep watching, because I promise that I will push it up to the maximum speed. This Maxi Rib was equipped with three Mercury 300 horsepower outboard engines all with XXL shaft and 21-inch pitched inertia propellers. The central engine is obviously mounted lower, so to draw water under the deep V of this hull. Do you see the waves? Well, when we started filming with the drone, the sea was calm, but now it has suddenly gotten worse. So, I'm forced to do the dynamic part of this test in the worst condition. Just over 11 knots of speed, the hull goes into planing. Let's go get some sea in the bow. The trim is completely low. Limited pitch, very strong wind. 3,000 RPM, 25 knots of speed. At these intermediate cruising speeds, consumption is about 3 litres per mile. The hull has two steps, and we know that their function becomes effective over 30 knots. This could lead us to think that at lower cruising speeds, the hull is not efficient. But it is not so, because as I change speed, I see that we're going 0.35 miles, 0.4 miles with a litre, at 20 knots. What if I go faster? We're at 30 knots. Consumption is always less than 3 litres per mile. Not bad. Here's what I like about a real inflatable boat, and that it's tubulars that touch the wake and thus stabilise the roll. I'm sailing a beam sea. I don't have to correct the course. I'm now at 35 knots. I could go on like this for hours. I give it some trim. By lifting up the bow, I feel it navigate even better. And in fact, the speed starts to increase. Four thousand eight hundred RPM. That's unbelievable. Forty knots of speed. And this is the cruising pace that we are able to maintain in this situation. Allora, adesso. So, are you ready to jump on board? Are you brave enough to do it? Because I have the courage to go full throttle. It has even more directional stability at full speed. Now I even have to cross the wake of other boats that have passed right in front of me. But I'm not giving up. Nope. Wow! <laughs> I can't believe it, 6,600 RPM, 54 knots of speed. This is crazy, and I could keep on going like this for hours. I'd just be having fun. Well, I would be consuming a bit. Now, looking at the homologation certificate of this inflatable boat, I found out that it supports up to 1,200 horsepower of maximum power. That means that you could also mount two 600 horsepower V12 Mercury engines. But in my opinion, the choice must be made between this configuration with three 300 horsepower or two of 450 horsepower. 
This setup seems perfect to me. And remember that setup matters a lot. It is really important for safety and for fun.